have Jane Brindle, Judy Meister, Lee Marsh, and Liz Burns in worship today. And they're playing a kind of mini concert of chamber music this morning, a special treat for us. And so I want to invite you to enjoy these moments in silence as you listen quietly as they play and we prepare our hearts and minds to worship God together. Thank you.
Thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful music. I needed that. As they say in Cuba, it has been a large weekend. And I needed the sound of that music to bring me into this space for this moment. Uh, it has been a large weekend. If the room looks a little different, we went back and forth with whether to leave up wedding decorations for All Saints. Does it go together? I checked in with a few people and they said, yes, it goes together because we're here to celebrate life even as we remember and continue to grieve on this All Saints Sunday. So we come today celebrating the very recent marriage as of Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock of Allie Bloom Hammond to Anthony Hammond. It's a big music day with strings, two organists, a pianist. It, there's a lot going on that Bob has pulled together for us this morning. I hope as you leave today, you will look at all the new plantings and our landscape design because a lot of folks were here yesterday working hard and children were here planting and then we got to play some and eat snacks with the kids too. Um, so a lot has been going on this weekend and all of it wonderful. And this is always one of the most special Sundays of the year for me. When we read the names of those who have died, we will be saying more about that as the service goes on. But we welcome you this morning to this All Saints Sunday worship service. Thank you to our young people who started this, this morning by making sandwiches for our friends. Uh, Roof Above has opened up a hotel for 56 people who do not have homes and our young people have made sandwiches for them. They will be delivered and so thank you youth for doing that. Come back at 5.30. Ryan and Kathleen will be leading you uh, this afternoon at 5.30 for youth group stuff. I also wanted to mention one more thing. If you've not already gotten in the mail, it's coming to you. Your very own pledge card for, I know, it's, it was personally addressed to you. I saw someone gasping that they are excited to see it come. You don't have to wait until Commitment Sunday to turn this in. You can join Russ and me now. We have already turned ours in. We've signed it. We've turned it in. Allison knows what we're going to give in 2023. It would be so helpful to us if you would go ahead and do that. Take a look at what you gave last year. See if you can do a little more this year and join us in trying to bring the ministry and mission that happens here at Park Road to, um, to be the best it can be for us to fulfill our commitment to living in the way of Jesus. It does take money, and so we hope you will consider that uh, as you look at your giving for 2023. So continue to take that deep breath as we enter into a time of worship today. May we worship God in spirit and in truth.
read with me the litany of worship. In all our weakness and strength, with our youth-filled spirits and aging bodies, we call to be Strong in faith and eager with questions, singing our praise and whispering our prayers. We come to be your people, God. Filled with saintly determination, yet mindful of our human limitations. We come to be your people, God. Made strong in your endless love for us, we know ourselves to be yours and Please pray with me. God of endless love, you are our divine source. Thank you for giving us access to you. As we admit our faults, give and receive forgiveness, show mercy, love ourselves, serve others, send our prayers. This is our direct route to you. When we laugh, when we weep, when we dance, when we sing, we are with you and you are with us. We miss loved ones who have gone on ahead of us. How grateful are we that the love we shared on earth continues to unite us. Comfort us with the reminder that we are held together in your heart, God. May we recognize we are called children of God, and through that calling, help us to be your saints. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, On this All Saints Sunday, let us remember those who have gone before us, whose steadfast faith has shown us, shown us what it means to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. And let us give thanks for those saints still living and involved in our lives, whose faith challenges us to follow Christ more closely and to serve the needs of those around us. Let us keep silence together. And now would you join me in saying our prayer of confession. O merciful God, mindful of all those choice souls who have gone on ahead of us, teach us and each 21st century disciple of every race and place to follow their example to the best of our ability, to feed the poor in body or spirit to support and comfort the mourners and the repentant, to encourage the meek and stand with them in crisis, to affirm those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, to cherish and learn from the merciful, to be humbled by and stand with 
the peacemakers. Let us clearly recognize what it means to be called the children of God and to know we are to be your saints, neither by our own inclination nor in our own strength, but simply by the call and the healing holiness of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We say it every week, and yet we can't say it often enough. Please know that you are loved and you are forgiven, so be at peace. I'd like to invite the children to join me for our time together on this side today. That just makes my day. I'll have to tell what we did yesterday. Some of us were here planting a lot of things in the ground. We got our hands dirty, got some dirt under our fingernails, except you had gloves, you were prepared, yes. And I'll have to tell you what Ari, who just ran up here and gave me a big hug, said. Ari is four, yes, yes. And he looked at Russ and he said, he calls him Pastor Russ, don't you? He said, Pastor Russ, you're my family. Is that not the sweetest thing you've ever heard in your whole life? You are my family. And we've come here today as family. So I want you all to just look. I want you to stand up here on these steps right here. And I want you to look out. And I want to show you your family. Just look at them. Wave to them. Everybody wave back. Look. It's your family. Isn't it great to have a big family? That's one of the best things about church, I think, is having a big family. We are not alone. Just look at them. Aren't they pretty? Aren't they prettier? Yes, they are. Okay, sit back down here, because I want to have a prayer before we go. It's good to be family. Because sometimes there are things that are so happy that we have to celebrate together. And sometimes there are things that are so sad that we have to be sad together. And that is one of the reasons we have church. To be sad and happy together with a big family. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you are always with us no matter what. That you love us always no matter what. So help us to always be with each other and to love each other no matter what. Amen.
quite sure which was more enjoyable, having that sung as the bride and groom were just standing right there listening to it and being blown away by it during the uh, wedding ceremony, or to have Antony playing it himself for the first time he's ever played it. He wrote it, but hadn't ever played it. And so it's really been a wonderful weekend of um, celebration and um, a huge thank you to the choir and to Bob, to Roxanne for all the rehearsal. Um, as a former minister of music, Ann Hunter Itson used to say, that was not an add water and stir anthem. And they just did a superb job. And it is a wonderful gift to our church to uh, have commissioned Anthony to write that for us at, for the occasion of their wedding. I want to begin where I left off on Wednesday night. I know that many of you were not here for our Wednesday night service, so I'll catch you up to speed a little bit. Wednesday was actually All Souls Day, which comes right after All Saints Day proper, which follows All Hallows Eve, Halloween. From the early centuries of Christianity, November the 1st and 2nd have been observed as days to remember the dead. This remembrance most likely originated in Celtic lands where this time of year marks the beginning of the death of nature. And by the, by the 5th century in Rome, there was a festival for all the saints celebrated in the Pantheon. And eventually, November the 1st was marked as a day to remind the Christian faithful that they are in communion with all that have gone on before them, all the saints who have gone on before them. But then, November the 2nd began to be celebrated as a day more focused on all the dead, not just those deemed as saints. At Park Road, since I'm not sure when, but since forever, Park Road has marked remembering all of those who have died, who have been a member of this church, on the first Sunday of November. So last Wednesday night, which was All Souls Day, we called the names of those in our lives not necessarily affiliated with this church, and we lit candles to remember them. There were tears as it should be, and smiles and laughter as we told stories, again, as it should be. And I read a bit from Hebrews 11, which is a listing of some of the saints of old, like Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses, just to name a few that were listed there. Each one beginning their story being told with, by faith, Abraham did so and so, and by faith, Moses did so and so. It's kind of, uh, and then there's sections in there that included the nameless ones. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. It's a hall of fame of sorts of the people of God who have lived by faith. Not perfect, plenty broken in their own rights, regular old human beings that, you, that God used in the ongoing task of bringing in God's kingdom. Well, Hebrews 11 has its biblical hall of fame, and Park Road has our own hall of fame, who have lived by faith, connected in some way as a member of Park Road Baptist Church, not perfect, plenty broken in their own rights, regular old human beings that God used in the ongoing task to bring in God's kingdom. Just take a look at that insert in your bulletin for just a second. We're going to read all these names following worship today out in our columbarium, and we invite all of you to join us. You don't have to know them to hear their names and appreciate what they've done in this place. But I want you to take a look at your own beginnings with Park Road. Now for some of you, that goes way back. For others, your story starts much more recently. 
But just look at the people who have been a part in making this a community of faith, a people of God who are inclusive and welcoming to all. Not all churches have that kind of hall of faith. Take a look at all the people who have committed their, way, their lives to the way of Jesus in this place, believing that no matter the color of your skin, your marital status, your sexual orientation, your gender identification, no matter, you are a beloved child of God and you are welcome here. I thank God for every single one of these people. For Russ and me, it starts a little more than halfway through the year 2000 with Goldie Whitley. That was our first funeral here. And it's always overwhelming to me to see how many names are after hers. That's a lot of loss. That's a lot of sorrow. That's a lot of grief. It's also a lot of wonderful memories and good times and great stories to tell. Oh, the stories I want to tell you about so many of these people. Without a doubt, as I read through all the names from Goldie Whitley on, a smile comes to my face for some story I could tell you. So today, remember well and tell their stories. And keep listening, those of you who have, are a little closer to the 2022 names and may not even have been here long enough to know those people listed in the last couple of years. Keep listening to our history, for our history points us to our future. After the chapter 11 Hebrews Hall of Faith, we get these words that begin the 12th chapter of Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that is what this is. This is a great cloud of witnesses. Thanks be to God that their lives have graced ours and made Park Road who she is. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number one day. But until then, let us live life to the fullest, running with perseverance the race that is set before us. May it be so. Amen. There's power in a name, great power just in hearing a name. Every year at this service, we have church members, family, and friends to return to Park Road simply to hear the name of a saint read. There's power in a name. And so we gather at this moment to light a candle and to speak the name of those who have gone before us in this year. And following the service, we will call all of the names. As we lift up these names, we lift them up into the eternal presence of God and into this great cloud of witnesses that we might consider how we might live better because of these, our loved ones. Grant Helms. Lynn Baucom. Martha Bass. Mac Duncan. Martha Kleinard. Jim Russell.
Let us pray. Gracious God, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, which now include Grant and Lynn and Martha and Mac and Martha and Jim, let us begin the process of laying aside our burdens so that we may begin again to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. May we remember well and tell their stories. Amen.
Amen. And amen, and may it be so. I mentioned to you at the beginning of the service about our annual ministry plan, but each month we also have a mission that we are supporting. And I would like to invite Melissa Hoffman to come and tell us about our mission for November, which is helping the Haitian people. Good morning, everybody. Um, first, can I say, wow, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your service today. You guys are amazing. Holy cow. That was incredible. So thank you very much. Um, my name is Melissa Hoffman, and I'm the executive director at a nonprofit based here in Charlotte called EWO. We um, partner with a community in Haiti, very remote in the mountains, about 70 miles north of Port-au-Prince. It began in 1994 with three teachers, 105 students, and they held school under a mango tree. They didn't even have a building. Today, this school has grown to over 2,300 students and has three campuses. Since 2009, our organization, EWO, has been making real relationships with this community through our student sponsorship program, entrepreneurship, and fundraising. Our name, EWO, it's different, right? But EWO is the Haitian Creole word for hero. And we truly believe that the students are the hero in the story of how Haiti is going to turn out. Um, we exist because we think that education is what is necessary to break the cycle of poverty and produce sustainable change in this country. As you may already know, Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The literacy rate is up to almost 61% now. Sadly, the government only funds education through the sixth grade. If a student wanted to go to school for seventh grade or a later grade than that, they would have to live in a major city. It's just not available in more rural communities, and there's a lot of really rural, rural communities in Haiti. Um, in the community that we support, Bayonne, they have that opportunity. We have the school there provides education from grades kindergarten all the way up to 13th grade. So we are so blessed to be able to partner with this community. Another thing I wanted to share with you is that many students begin school at age three. I may you're wondering, like, why, why would you send a school, kid to school that early? And the truth of the matter is, if students don't um, go to school around that age, they become a, a, a very important part of the household's workforce. And by the time they're five, they, the, the, the house can't, cannot, um, they can't spare that, that labor in their household. So they send them to school early so that they will be able to get an education. Today, I want to tell you about a campus called Nicola. It is our most remote campus. It is on only accessible by foot and literally sits on top of a mountain. I hiked this to this campus in my first trip to Haiti in 2018, so I can tell you it's no joke. Imagine building a campus on the top of a mountain that's only accessible by foot. So every bag of cement, every cinder block, every bar of rebar, every bit of it had to be carried up to the top of this mountain on foot. But they were willing to do this because before this campus was built, students would walk up to four hours to attend school on the main campus. I want to share with you today the fundraiser that I am so fortunate to, that your um, November uh, missions offering is going to go to will help to build a kitchen, a new kitchen on this campus. It's fallen into disrepair. The roof is no longer there protecting the cooks from the hot Haitian sun, and the walls are falling down. The students of Nicola and those that prepare their meals deserve a better kitchen. Um, the best part about this whole fundraiser is that we have got a, um, an anonymous donor that has uh, committed to matching every dollar for dollar for this fundraiser. So if you give $5, it instantly becomes $10 and makes this kitchen a, a more of a reality for this community. A hot meal during school and a safe learning environment is not a given in many areas of Haiti, but we are excited that it is for our friends in this community. 
we're very thankful to partner with your church. I love it that you said church family because I always say church family. And so we're very lucky to partner with your church family to make this a real possibility for, this, for these students. Um, we have a table. Some of you saw me first thing when you came in this morning, set out in the breezeway right outside the sanctuary. Both myself and one of our board members, Jody uh, McIsaac, will be out there. And we would love to talk to you about the school, about our sponsorship program, about this fundraiser, and answer any questions that you might have. So I hope after um, service is over that I'll see a lot of you guys out there and we can talk to you. And truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for allowing us to come and be a part of your service today. Thank you. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before and those who are here. And if you would come and be a part of that cloud of witnesses, part of this family of faith, we would be honored and delighted to have you. Amy and I will be at the front if you would come while we sing our final hymn, Welcome.
Thank you. Please be seated. Melissa had it right. What a wonderful day in worship. And wow, you are wonderful. Thank you so much to our quartet for joining us today and Anthony Hammond and choir. Wow, it's uh, wonderful for me to be able to sing with you. Thank you so much for the beautiful music today. As always, we ask you to remain seated for the postlude. And if you wonder what improvisation on uh, when the saints go marching in, it means he's just making it up as he goes and doesn't have any music up there. So we've done this a couple of times and done this song as we head out to the columbarium um, because there is an element to our grief where we also get to be joyful that the people that we miss graced our lives at all. And so in the midst of the sorrow and the tears and the joy, there is a moment of gratitude and celebration for their lives well lived. And we invite you, when Anthony finishes, to join us in the columbarium for the reading of all the names. The final word is not ours, but the Lord's. So hear this good word of benediction as we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, and may God be gracious to you. May God give you grace this day to love with all your heart. That you might do justice. To love with all your soul. That you might show mercy. To love with all your mind. That you might walk humbly with your God. As you go into the world this day, dear friends, love the Lord your God with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. 